some of their Christmas cocktails. I saw caribou out there. It's like we're really at the North Pole. So one lady said she had, her husband had half of a meeting before he got to the car. Just, I mean, there's something so Christmassy about a hot cocoa, right? Merry Christmas, Cakeland. Welcome to this special edition of Good Morning Cakeland. We're out of the studios, clearly, but we're so excited to be celebrating the holidays with you. We're over here at Fulton Valley Farms near Tawanda celebrating Christmas. Yeah, and we've got an amazing show for you here. So much in store, some amazing sights and sounds of the season. We've got a Kansas native who's dancing on the big stage as part of a beloved holiday tradition. And we've got a full glass of ideas for some holiday cocktails. But first, we're going to take you all across Cakeland, showing you some of the many Christmas displays here at Fulton Valley Farms. They have their own walkthrough display, and we'll show you that as well. Well, we're starting off in Rose Hill this morning, where the Griswold House display may have Clark beat. The home on Tanglewood Road has become a tradition for many in the town, growing a little more every year. And about four or five years ago, it finally got the point just big enough people in town started noticing. Well, that prompted me to want to go bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I'm not sure what the catalyst was, but in uh, COVID, uh, my audience increased probably 500%. It went from about 1,000 guests to a little over five to 6,000 guests. It is impressive indeed. That home is at 1610 Tanglewood Road. You'll find all sorts of decorations there. You'll even find Clark Griswold himself. Uh -huh. Guys, that is uh, about as good of an effort as you can give it in the holiday season. Tangled wood, it looks like tangled cords. <laughs> All those slides, <laughs> can you imagine. imagine trying to store that stuff? Yeah, good luck, so Rusty. Many. Come on. Good, go good luck, Rusty. Rusty. <laughs> Half an hour southeast, a beloved tradition in Cali County is back for its 29th year. Winfield Isle of Lights open now through December 30th from 6 to 10 and is installed completely by volunteers. The mile long drive through display is at Island Park featuring more than a million lights and many light displays, including family favorites from The Wizard of Oz and 12 Days of Christmas along with lights reflecting off of the water throughout the park. It's really beautiful. You can find it right off of North Main Street in Winfield. Admission is free for this one, guys, but donations certainly are appreciated. It's really cool. I yeah. love driving through it with your family, and it's just awesome. A little hometown so, representation there. Yeah, you got to love things down in the Winfield, Wellington area, and that's one that you don't. And I just love that you can drive around. You don't have to get out when it's cold. I mean, enjoy it in your car. That's right. Uh, you might go for a little bit of a drive here, Frank. Let's go to Dodge City. Yeah, we're going to go way west for this one. We go to western Kansas. Dodge City kicked off its holiday season with a parade of lights and chili cook-off. The celebration featured all kinds of events, from chili sampling to hot chocolate to a snowball drop all followed by the Parade of Lights and a special visit from Santa. This year marks 150 years that Dodge City has been around. They've been celebrating all year long. And back here in Wichita, uh, Wichita holiday tradition, it's now open the Ability Point Lights, flipping the lights, bringing carloads of local families to West Wichita. It used to be known as the Arc Lights on St. Paul, but it's still the same drive through light display people know and love. With one and a half million sparkling lights, it costs $10 per car, $20 for buses and limos. The lights help raise funds to support ability point programs and services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities all year round as well. Christmas lights, though, are not the only tradition this time of year. In fact, food plays a big role this season. Yeah, while well, a lot of activities like bingo will really help out a senior center in Harvey County, uh, it has no comparison to what baking pepper nuts can do for it. That's right. Cakes Hannah King takes us to Halstead and explains how pepper nuts actually keep the senior center up and running. It tastes just like the ones I grew up with. The ladies say forever, but it's estimated about 15 years they've baked them. Well, my timer went off and I have to see if these are done because that's when I get in trouble. I have to check with our chief one here. We're good. Okay. Okay. Mary Jo Hall has been the oven operator for about five of those years. I'm the, I'm the oven person. Well, yes, because sometimes I burn them. Some say it's the taste, while others say it's that snickerdoodle-like smell. It just isn't 
it isn't the holidays without them. So what exactly is it that keeps these cookies in high demand year after year? Well, what's been, give me two of them. Two of them? Okay. We'll save you an extra trip. Just our history, I guess. They start in the corner of this kitchen. Or where the mixer is. Then the dough goes here. And then we go to Carol here, who punches them all out. From there, they're added to trays, and off to the oven they go. <laughs> Take them out, put them on these trays, and then she bags them. It's just keeping active as our, at our age is good, and so um, I don't know, I just enjoy it. But all of this isn't just for festive fun. This uh, particular fundraiser is one that we are so successful with that we don't have to have other fundraisers throughout the year. It helps keep this senior center afloat. It's been our one number one fundraiser and we have always met or exceeded what we were hoping to make from it. Exceeding expectations, just like the group did last year. We've had a lot of people remember our story from last year, which has been really wonderful. They've traveled from Hutchinson, from you know all over Kansas, to make sure that they came in and saw us again and made sure to let us know that it was because they saw the story last year. We probably could have sold a thousand pounds, but we pooped out. I've got some peppernuts here. I've got five bags. I um, came in earlier um, and got five bags. And I just love them. They're, they taste like what I grew up with. And um, I love them to be able to take to my family gatherings. Enhancing family gatherings with this dime-sized dough. We do have some uh, funding that we receive from the state and from federal levels, but really this is the one that keeps us going. All while supporting the center. Last year, I don't want to say I procrastinated, but I waited a little too long. One pepper nut at a time. Because I'm not this year. <laughs> and while the ladies say there's no secret to this recipe, they do recommend to call the center ahead of time to make sure they have some of these highly sought after cookies still available. In Halstead, Hannah King, Cake News on your side. Last year, the ladies baked over 800 pounds of pepper nuts, and that brought in $2,000 more than expected. They hope to do the exact same thing this year. But the deal is they had to prep for this pretty early. They started back in September to get the stuff ready for ah, all that they had in front of them. My goodness, yeah. 800 wild. pounds, that's a lot. A lofty goals, and they are meeting them. All right, well, coming up here on a Merry Cakeland Christmas, a special Christmas performance from the Singing Quakers. Plus, I get to learn all about what it means to be a rock head with a Wichita native who is living a lifelong dream. And we get to meet some vital helpers to Santa, when and where you can get to meet some reindeer. Welcome back, Cake Land. Many of us have holiday traditions. Oh yeah, and a Wichita native started hers when she was very little. And it's led to a journey halfway across the country, but the coolest part, guys, is that it led to her discovering that she can actually reach her biggest dream. It's a destination millions head to for the holidays the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, Union Station, the Statue of Liberty, Central Park, and of all things in New York City, even a piece of cake land. I am Stevie Mack and I grew up, was born and raised in Wichita, Kansas, and I am now a Radio City Rocket. Radio City has over 6,000 seats, so it's amazing to be able to spread Christmas joy every single day. Tucked away in Radio City, amid this group of dancers, you'll find a determined Kansan. I knew at a young age, when I was around five years old, I saw the Rockettes first perform, and I immediately fell in love. Just the beauty, the timelessness, like everything about it is just truly, truly spectacular. A seven, a eight, a one, a two, top three. Yet to get there, just as intricate as the moves on stage, it wasn't easy. I auditioned for seven years. And after seven years, I got the job, I got the phone call, and it was truly life-changing. What kept you going back every time? Because seven times is quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was like, I, I know I can do it. And I had to prove to myself.
being a part of the sisterhood and the legacy to do the same dances that they were doing in 1933, like Parade of the Wooden Soldiers. It's, it's, it's incredible. Fourteen hundred miles away from home, being a part of a Christmas tradition, but realizing the biggest gift is right in front of her, proving that with determination, dreams do come true. You as a, a child, loving and falling in love with the Rockettes, and now, you know, you're performing, and I just think it's so cool. Like, you could be influencing some little girl out there. That's our goal as Rockettes. We want to inspire the next generation of dancers and, and just really spread as much joy as we can. I wouldn't be here if I gave up, you know? It's trusting the timing, it's doing the hard work, and it's being able to say you achieved your goals. So the Rockcats, they've been dazzling millions of people around the world. It's so cool. And they've been doing it since 1925 when they started. So think about that. That's about 100 years. But the thing that I thought was so interesting in each performance, they do about 160 of those oh. high kicks each time. Can you imagine? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Sure can't. Oh, I think legs. I just pulled a hand. I know. It hurt so bad. <laughs> But it's cool to see that. And you know, thinking about New York City, it kind of gets me thinking of movies because there's so many classic films that focus on, you know, NYC and different parts of the country too. But I'm curious, what is your guys' favorite Christmas film? Well, you said NYC there. I got to say, maybe Home Alone 2. Oh, yeah, Home Alone. Yeah. You're going Home Alone 2? Are you going Home Alone 1? Yeah. Hey, as long as Kevin McAllister's doing something, <laughs> uh, I'm good with it. Yeah. But even Kevin McAllister, I think he takes a backseat to Clark Griswold. That's true. I know. Come on. Like, Christmas vacation. You got to love a little National Lampoon's action. Yeah. Well, how about this? Okay, so there are surveys out there. Companies are doing uh, surveys to find out what the most popular Christmas movies are for people in each state. Now, according to WealthyNickel.com, this is the latest data, uh, <laughs> the most popular Christmas movie in Kansas is Miracle on 34th Street. Your Honor, every one of these letters is addressed to Santa Claus. The post office has delivered them. Therefore, the post office department, a branch of the federal government, recognizes this man, Chris Kringle, to be the one and only Santa Claus. Well, Miracle on 34th Street, it follows Chris Kringle as he surprises Macy's customers and employees alike by claiming that he really is Santa Claus. That leads to a court case to determine his mental health and, more importantly, his authenticity. The 1947 classic stars Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Natalie Wood, and Edmund Gwen as Chris Kringle. The movie has been remade a few times over the years, of course, including in 1973 and 1994, each one with that cute little girl. And meanwhile, Rotten Tomatoes lists the movie as the third overall best holiday movie among its subscribers. The movie gets a 96% on the tomato meter and an 87% audience score. Their top movies, by the way, are Meet Me in St. Louis and Shop Around the Corner, two of producer Jen's favorite Christmas movies. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Coming up, things get a little wild here at Fulton Valley Farms. We're talking reindeer. I mean, live reindeer. They're here. And if you're talking holiday spirit, how about holiday spirits? We go to Chicken and Pickle to learn the secrets of the trade here on a Merry Cakeland Christmas. Welcome back to a Merry Cakeland Christmas as Wichita, Kansas experiences the holiday season. There is one popular spot that brings in the large crowds year round, but for winter time, chicken and pickle turns into a winter wonderland. For its snowbound event, you've got kids out here on the ice rink at all hours, really, but the party really comes inside when you hit the bar and you get some of their Christmas cocktails. And at Chicken and Pickle, making the drinks right now, Maddie Erickson. She's been having fun with us here so far. Uh, Maddie, the Christmas season comes, the menus change around here, and you're going to help us out uh, to understand how that is. Uh, what are some of the specialty drinks that we're looking at? So we got four specialty drinks this season. We got our Bright Cider Life, the Jingle, the gin, jingle Juice, 
excuse me, there's gin in it. That's what the name is for. <laughs> uh, winter element and then the fireside toddy. And a lot of these uh, bring in kind of a different taste for people who really don't get this year round. Uh, what are some of the really things that make them stand out to you? They're just different and like the names as well. They're just fun. Yeah, and a lot They of just fun. bring joy to the customers here. So a little sprig of rosemary yeah. here. Oh, you yeah. got the mint sticking out. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of different elements to it. What are you going to show us uh, how to make? I'm going to make the jingle juice and the winter elements for you today. Hey, let's get into it. All right. Perfect. I'm sitting here let's in my bar stool. And I'm going to watch my barkeeper here uh, go through it. So the first thing you have is? I'm going to do the J. Rieger gin. And then there's going to be a little bit of grapefruit juice in there. And some cranberry juice. And then we're going to shake that. Got to shake it up. Make it all good. That's how you know professionals at work. A little cherry little bitters. bitters. Okay. And we're going to pour that in and top it with a press. And the fun part and comes in here with the cranberries. Sugar-coated cranberries and some rosemary. Well done. That's a beautiful drink. That is a beautiful Very drink. Good. And right alongside it here, I'm guessing uh, that you've got the mojito flavor going on here. Yep, yep. It has a uh, cranberry-infused Bacardi in it, some mint leaves, some simple syrup, and then we're going to top with soda. Okay, and again, this is the winter elements. I like it. Uh, all the plays on words. You got them down for sure. Got now, a little bit of lime juice in there as well. Fresh. Good. <laughs> now, how busy is it around here? I mean, we know that this is a huge popular place, but uh, at this time of year, is it still the same? Oh, yeah. Especially with our ice skating rink outside, that brings in a lot of people. So oh, yeah. it's really awesome. And of course, as yeah. the Chiefs are still playing, I know game day gets a little crazy <laughs> here, too. Oh, yeah. So getting the winter elements together. I got to say, the service is fantastic so far. She's speedy, she's doing great. Shaking it up a few times. Now you've got the mint leaves in here, the lime juice. Some simple, and then with our cranberry infused Bacardi, and then we just top that with some soda water. Awesome. And then beautiful mint sprig and a lime wedge on that. And there it is. <laughs> you know, as a bartender, how much pride do you take in the presentation? I mean, that's part of the fun, right? Yeah, I love it. I always try to recommend the most beautiful drink to everybody, too. So, <laughs> which, these two right here, you have to come try them out. Yes. They're really good. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we will do that. Thank you so much, Maddie. We sure appreciate it. Uh, this has been the expertise of Wichita's a bartender here at Chicken and Pickle, Maddie Erickson. Uh, we're going to set it to break here, but we'll be back with the Wichita singing Quakers from Friends University. Cheers. And now the sounds of the season with Friends University's Singing Quakers.
to a merry cake land Christmas. You know, we've been spending all morning here at Fulton Valley Farms, but I feel like there's so much to explore. There's so much to see and we get to see a lot of the faces behind the majesty here for Christmas and Betty Corbin does an amazing job masterminding a lot of this experience for people who come to this area near Tawanda and uh, they get to bask in the Christmas spirit. Betty, how do you do this? It's a labor of love. It really truly is when we walk out the door and we see these people wandering around and they're laughing and they're having fun with their families and the little kids, little meaning from two foot to six foot, and their eyes are big like saucers and they have big grins on their faces. It is a magical time and it's a fun time and that's what makes it worthwhile for us. I mean, what does that mean to you though? I mean, cause you have all these people and it's like every day, it's just boom, 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 those big eyes and just, ah. It is, it is, it was, it's just heartwarming. It is being grateful for all the blessings that we have and being able to share those with the public. It's wonderful. And uh, we're glad that we're here to be able to share it with Cakeland, sitting in front of an amazing Christmas village. We've seen a Christmas tree with so many ornaments and the decor. We're sitting under an amazing chandelier and a, a barn that's just perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah. how do you make this grow every year? I mean, at what point do you just say, this is it, enough? Enough is enough. Uh -huh. Hopefully, well, you know, if you're not, if you don't go big, don't go home. You got to go home. Uh -huh. So we are planning on uh, tweaking it every year. We want to add just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, grow it slowly until the people say, okay, that's enough. But when they stop coming, then we'll know we're there. But otherwise, we're going to continue to try to grow it and make it more magical every year. And I think it's really, I mean, you could really spend the whole day out here. Yeah, that. you so could if you really wanted to do everything there is to do. What is everything on that okay, list? Okay, <laughs> so we have the big barn, and it was our hay barn, mm -hmm. built in 1951. And it is all lit up with lots of stuff. And you can do private parties here. You can do company parties here. We do a, every Friday night, we do a family dinner here. Mom doesn't want to cook. She doesn't want to clean. She doesn't want to have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Bring mom here, and we do a traditional family Christmas dinner with two meats and all the trimmings, and we have a good time. And we have live music in here. Okay, that's the big barn. Yeah. We have a smaller barn where we do the same things. And then you go out and you see the animals. You can feed the goats and you can pet the sheep and the donkeys. We do a live nativity every evening at 7.30 with actors. We do, uh, let's see, we even have alpacas this year. Oh, oh they goodness. are the cutest <laughs> things. They have the fuzziest little faces. And we, of course, met the reindeer. And then we have live reindeer on yeah. display and we have Santa here and we have the Grinch here. And we just have so many things for the kids to do over in their play area. Mm -hmm. And we even have a sleigh that holds 15 to 20 people and is pulled by a pair of Clydesdales. Wow. Oh my goodness. Some and of those experiences. But of course, viewing the lights as well. Yeah. Right. Oh, the lights. Yeah, That's the, the number lights. one thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We have 800,000 to a million lights in the woods oh where you goodness. just walk through and they dance to the music. It is, it is for us a magical time and we hope to make that a magical time for you. I love that. You're putting everyone in the holiday spirit and everything. Oh. If we need a plan to come out here, do we need to book anything in advance? How does that work? We do have everything online. Got you it. can even get your Christmas cookie and your hot chocolate and your hot cider online. Oh my goodness. But uh, you can come to the gate and go to the, just to go to the gate and pay and do it that way too. Because you, you know what? I don't know where my family is. I don't know when we're going to be able to come. I don't know what we're going to do. So if you want to do it last minute, do it last minute. And what is the last minute for those folks who might want to circle it on the calendar? This is our last chance to visit. Okay, we are open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On the 16th, we will also go into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday till the 23rd. And we're open from 5.30 to 9 o'clock in the evening. And hopefully we want to see each and every one of them come out and do something fun. Let's have some fun this uh, new holiday season. New Christmas tradition for your family. Yes. Bolton Valley Farms. All right. Thank yes. you so much, Betty. We sure appreciate you. No, thank you. Thank you for being here. As much of a treat as it's been to talk to Betty, we have some Christmas treats for you coming up. They're nice and toasty, so cozy up for more Merry Cakeland Christmas. Welcome back to a Merry Cakeland Christmas and welcome to Papa's General Store at Clifton Square in Wichita. This place has it all. Wait till you see all the treats. We're talking about ice cream. We're talking about cocoa bombs, cake pops, and extreme shakes. 
What is that? Well, we're going to ask the owner right now. Derek Sorrell has brought this place to life. Thanks so much for being with us uh, on the Christmas show here. Thanks for coming by. Tell me if you can about the cocoa bomb. You know, the great thing about a cocoa bomb, it, it's you can have different flavors for everyone in the family, whether it's milk chocolate, peppermint, cinnamon roll. Everybody can have exactly what they want. And if you want a little bit of extra pop to it, we make boozy bombs as well. So when you are making these at the store, it's all based on your own creativity. You can really do whatever you want. It really is. And we try to make them for everyone in the family. So the kids love the funfetti. The parents love the cinnamon roll. And, and, and peppermint takes you back to the old Christmas days. And we make them all here, one by one, by hand in store. So how long do I really have to wait to dig in? You can literally dig in right away. It really just depends on how hot the milk is. Okay. You can also use like water, now. but you can <laughs> dig right in. And it's so good. It's so good. It's something so Christmassy about uh, hot cocoa, right? We have so many people that started getting these during the pandemic, and they've made it into part of their family tradition. Mm -hmm. And that's a good decision. Wow. Okay. And it's not just hot cocoa bombs, though. I'm going to have to put this down as hard as it is because we've got something else coming your way. And we're talking about extreme shakes. What is an extreme shake? An extreme shake is taking that milkshake that you're used to getting and taking it to an extreme level, making it even bigger and better than you've ever had before. And this is, again, another example of the creativity at play. Absolutely. You got all kinds of flavors. Yeah, we have 12 different kinds of extreme shakes. We have our Oreo, which we're going to make today, and our really popular this time of year, our Little Debbie Christmas tree shake, which is super popular. You know, this is the great thing is we have our amazing Christmas shake here. It's just vanilla ice cream, but it's blended with green sprinkles. We have a Little Debbie Christmas tree, a couple of peppermint spoons, frosted reindeer, <laughs> and then mine is an Oreo, and it's got Oreo crumbles around it, Oreo mixed in. We're going to top it with Oreos and brownies as well. Where do you even start? Well, you start with a little bit of whipped cream. Okay. So the first thing you do is, is you know, shake it up just a little bit, put just a little bit of whipped cream in there to give it a little bit of base. Yeah. Uh, and then you just start building from there. Okay, just uh, based on your own creativity, that's let it go. Exactly, that's exactly right. I've got the candy cane straw, some reindeer going in. And you know there's going to be lots of sprinkles on this, right? And absolutely. And <laughs> keep that keep that whipped cream going. We are big believers in whipped cream here. The more whipped cream you have, uh, the better. So that's what gives it a little bit of life to it. So oh, yours looks so good already. Well, I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> so we've got brownies going into this. We've got uh, Oreo cookies on top of that. And then, of course, you just keep going and adding that whipped cream in there because that's what gives it the life. Yeah. And then, of course... You're, you've, you're already on it. A little bit of sprinkles right there on top, and it is a little bit messy, but that's what would ice cream be with if it wasn't yeah, a little exactly. bit of mess? Exactly. It's part of the fun. All right, so it's like you've got this great work of art here, an absolute masterpiece. How, <laughs> how fun is it to eat? I'm going to You know, try if you're it. not making a mess uh -huh. when you eat it as well as making it, you're not doing the right thing. That's so you right. You dig in there, you get a little bit of that. <laughs> and the, the, the ice cream's coming out the it's bottom? out the bottom, yeah. Man. I mean, there are people sitting around the store, I imagine, just wondering how, what's the best way to do it? But you find your way, and it's so worth the wait. That's exactly right. And that's why we put plates under them, because you are going to make a mess eating it. But that's, that's kind of the whole point. I'm telling you, Derek, this is like more than just a treat. This is an experience. It really is. And that's what we really wanted to do when we make these shakes, is part of the extreme part of it is not just the shake itself but it's part of the experience too. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. Seriously, we have a, a lot of time here to sit back and uh, enjoy our shakes, our extreme shakes from Papa's General Store. Go out and check them out. How can we find you? We're at 3700 East Douglas in Clifton Square. We're right next to Dempsey's, Ziggy's, and the Tea House. We'll be right back with more Good Morning Cakeland and a very Merry Cakeland Christmas thanks to this guy here. We've got our treats taken care of. Stay with us. Welcome back to a Merry Cakeland Christmas here at Fulton Valley Farms. I couldn't help but notice when I rolled into the parking lot, they have caribou here. It's like we're really at the North Pole. Yeah, they're, they're reindeer, Frank. They're reindeer. Well, aren't they the same thing? No, they are not. <laughs> Welcome in, Richard Corbin with Fulton Valley Farms, the expert here. Uh, yeah, settling a debate for us. Yes, Frank, they are North American reindeer. Okay, so what's the difference? Oh. Oh, looky here. Oh my, we've got a Christmas miracle on our hands. Richard, this is a reindeer. Yes, this is a North American reindeer. Her name is Itsy Bitsy and she is eight years old. Itsy Bitsy, where is Itsy Bitsy 
from? Because I've never seen one of these in Kansas. Reindeer are tundra animals. Okay. They are between the forest and the Arctic, surrounding the whole entire world. There is 12 species of reindeer. This one is a North American reindeer, so if you kind of trace her lineage back, she would be from Alaska to Greenland. Okay. And points in between, so. But she's here at Fulton Valley Farms. This yeah. is something that I can imagine is pretty unique. Yes, it is. It's very unique. We have three reindeer, and we take them out and use them for display. And we have them here at the farm for our Christmas event, so. And when people see a reindeer in person, probably for the first time, what is one of the, the biggest questions that you get about them? Do they fly? Okay. Of course. <laughs> and the answer is yes. Yes, they do. They fly on the 24th and they come back on the 25th because I'm asleep because Santa, you know, has to, you can't be awake when Santa shows up. <laughs> and um, what do they eat? And the misconception of the movies is carrots. They don't like carrots. They don't like them. They don't like carrots. Uh, they don't like apples. They really, they, they're not a treat animal. So um, that misconception is screwed. Well, something that's surprising to me is the size. Is this typical for a reindeer? She is, for her size, it is. But okay. for normal reindeer, she's, the females are about another two or three inches taller. That's why she gets itsy bitsy, so. But the males are about four inches taller, about 150 pounds heavier and uh, their racks are much, much bigger. Yeah, that's what I was going to add. The size of the rack is uh, amazing here. So you're looking at antlers that grow, what, throughout the year, and then they, do they disappear? The males um, lose their antlers right after rut, so about December. That's why all of Santa's reindeer are female. Oh, yeah, of course. Because the females keep their antlers until March. Until March. But these antlers, they have kind of like a reddish hue to them. Is that how they grow in, or is that just... She's, weathered. She's been rubbing on the red panels. Okay, I was wondering if they came in that <laughs> that's way. A, that's why they're all red. Yes. Uh, so as she gears up for uh, Christmas Eve, what is it like to bring kids in and families in and get to come face to face with her and uh, her friends? There is such a magical that you cannot imagine. Um, reindeer, when a reindeer job, we show up and kids will scream and holler and they will stay there and I've had people come up and say, my son spent the whole entire time looking at the reindeer and not doing any of the activities that we had to go do. I thought we were gonna camp out here for life. That's a lot to look at. You do get What a neat opportunity yeah. for sure. Thank you so much, Richard, for setting us straight, giving us a little reindeer education. The best place to see these out here at Fulton Valley Farms? The best place to see them is out here at Fulton Valley Farms and look on our Facebook page. We have the list of where we're going to events we're going to be at for the rest of the season. And I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Richard. All right, we'll be right back with more Merry Cakeland Christmas after this. Now we continue with more holiday cheer. Here is Risen Savior Lutheran Church's Bell Choir with Carol of the Bells.
We've had so much fun on this very merry Cakeland Christmas, but we had to change locations. That's right. No trip to Fulton Valley Farms would be complete without meeting the most famous Christmas character of all time. Wait, no, who's this? No, not you. Yeah, Grinch, get out of here. Come on, Grinch. Wait, don't come spoiling our Christmas. I kind of like that guy. Well, of course you would. No, no, guys. We have Santa here with us. Hi, Santa. Hi there. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I mean, we've been so eager to be able to see you. and We've got big questions. We've got big ones for you here. But first off, we're curious. Did we make the naughty or nice list? Some of you have pushed the envelope, <laughs> but all of you have made the nice list. Hey, oh, thanks good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> hmm. Well, you're about to get really, really busy, I can imagine. Tell me what that's like here. Hectic. Everybody's <laughs> running everywhere. Nobody knows what the other one's doing. Or at least I don't know what everybody's doing. The <laughs> head elf knows everything, so I'm in good, good shape. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's just busy, busy, busy. Well, normally you're stationed at the North Pole, of course, but you and even the reindeer come down here to spend some time at a country Christmas at Fulton Valley Farms. What's it like for you as you see kids come through here? The nice thing about coming out here is I get to see the smiles and the eyes get big. When I deliver on Christmas Eve, I don't get to see them. So this is worth it all to me. Any special moments when you have kids over here on your lap asking for that little something? They, uh, some of them forget what they want when they hit my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the good ones, because then I get to suggest what they want. Um, uh, electronics are big. Oh, yeah. Uh, I try to push them towards something with some activity to it other than sitting down and playing a game. Good call, mm -hmm. Santa. Good idea. Way to go. Hey, we have a very simple <laughs> Christmas wish for you, and it's to just have you send us off into the Christmas season. Can you do that? I can do that. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, Dave Land.